Isn't it weird that every computer needs an operating system? Think about it. If you never saw a computer and turned it on for the first time, you'd probably expect it to be able to run its own programs on its own without Windows or Mac OS or something, since the idea of one OS program being your entire computer seems like it'd be a giant security risk. So why do we need operating systems? Why do they even exist? Let's start with data. If you gave the data a computer has to handle to a person, it would be too dense and complicated for a human to figure out what it means. Data sent to your computer is sent in packets. Each packet gets a travel ID with sequence numbers, destinations, and routes, basically a GPS for data. TCP keeps packets in line, while IP plays the navigator, assigning destinations. These packets will hit digital road hazards like jitter, latency, or get lost on the way to your computer. And that's where your OS comes in with its error checking codes and something called a cyclic redundancy check to make sure nothing gets too crazy. They're kind of like airbags for your data. When those packets finally reach their destination, the OS kernel then reassembles them, guided by the TCP's sequence numbers to make sure your message arrives whole. A final checksum acts like an airport baggage check, verifying everything's intact. This packet magic unfolds in something called the OS's networking stack, where layers work together to transform these fragments back into a readable message for your computer and eventually for you. Without this, your data would arrive scrambled, like a puzzle missing half the pieces, and that wouldn't be very helpful for your computer or the apps that you use. Ever wonder how apps chat with your computer's hardware? The OS is like a translator, making sure every app speaks fluently to the hardware below. Each operation, clicks, commands, background tasks, all funnel through the OS kernel. So what's the kernel's job? Think of it like the OS's bouncer, handling system calls, or requests from apps, and granting or denying access to resources, like a security guard. A good kernel keeps latency low, breaking complex instructions into bite-sized steps the hardware can process in a snap. And a bad one lags. Quite a lot. All this funnels to the OS, which you can think of like a traffic controller on caffeine. It breaks down high-level commands into small, low-level tasks to avoid data traffic jams. But it's not just about managing resources. Each process wants its own little bit of CPU and memory power, and the OS must allocate in real time without waste. This process is helped by algorithms such as Round Robin and Multi-Level Queue that keep apps playing nice. In this analogy, think of the OS as the head chef in a bustling restaurant kitchen, ensuring every dish or app gets the appropriate measure of each ingredient or resource precisely when it's needed and that we're not serving the same table 10 plates of food while other tables get none. The OS also synchronizes with mutexes, semaphores, and other inter-process communication or IPC tools to handle multiple of these requests like it has to do all the time. Think of air traffic control, preventing processes from crashing into one another. But here's where it gets interesting because your OS actually isn't doing any multitasking at all. It just seems like it. It gives the illusion that it is running them all at the same time, but what is actually happening is that CPU time is being sliced up between them and constantly switched back and forth extremely quickly. Of course, a CPU wouldn't work with functioning memory, and the OS ensures things do not step on each other's toes. Just like with the CPU, it also manages the allocation of RAM, flinging data here and there faster than you can mutter, cash miss. And if an app goes rogue, the OS briefly takes the role of a strict parent, isolating the offending app to prevent it from crashing the entire household. It's magic, but the magic doesn't stop there. Without an OS, each application would need its code to talk directly to the hardware. Imagine every app being its own translator, inefficient and nearly impossible to maintain. Developers would have to rewrite code for every possible hardware setup and manage low-level operations themselves. The OS steps in as a universal translator, providing a single language for all apps to interact with the hardware. This hardware abstraction layer makes development practical, letting apps focus on what they do best instead of getting bogged down by hardware specifics. And that's why the OS is crucial. It makes computing scalable and consistent, giving each piece of hardware a voice in the digital symphony. But managing hardware is just one part of the OS's job. How does it keep everything running smoothly? 
But the OS doesn't just manage resources, it also protects them. It's like having a 24-7 bodyguard, ensuring only trusted users and applications access sensitive resources. The OS handles user authentication, controls access, and guards against malicious software to keep threats at bay. With features like app isolation, the OS keeps applications in their own sandbox, preventing them from messing with each other or spreading errors. Think of it as a protective barrier, ensuring that if one app throws a tantrum, it doesn't drag everyone else down with it. This security layer makes the OS a guardian for hardware and software, essential for stability in our digital lives. So we know the OS protects, but how can an OS maintain all these processes efficiently and in an organized manner? Speaking of, thanks so much for all the support on the channel lately. It really means a lot, and I want to give something back to you guys. So do you need a job? That sounded a bit weird. <laughs> but whether you're a UX designer, app developer, freelancer, or just a curious viewer, I want to get to know you guys, share some UX and UI tips, and maybe even get a gig. So I made a Discord channel for us and want to make this the place to be for front-end professionals. And I'm having talks with people to get some employers in there so you can connect with them them too and find some jobs in the future. I'm really excited to get this thing started, so I hope you'll join me. It runs nice, but what about efficiency? That's next level OS magic. They make cunning plans for speed and performance using sophisticated memory management and I.O. optimization methodologies. It also includes intelligent page replacement algorithms, LRU and NRU, for memory hierarchy management and sophisticated caching mechanisms implementing write-back and write-through policies to align data consistency and performance. I prefer caching as having L1, L2, and L3 cache work in concert with the Translation Look-Aside Buffer, or TLB. The more levels of the system that cache can use, the quicker memory access. It uses demand paging and page fault management. The OS has advanced algorithms that can figure out what pages it will need in the future and preload pages before they are needed. On the other hand, lazy loading initializes only when necessary, helping improve the initial loading time and memory. The OS uses predictor algorithms based on machine learning, heuristic analysis, etc., to dynamically allocate resources. These include branch prediction, literally trying to anticipate what path your code will take before you reach it, speculative execution, executing operations you might need based on the predicted path, and clever I.O. scheduling algorithms such as the completely fair queuing or CFQ and deadline schedulers. The OS dynamically adapts its behavior based on the system calls memory access patterns and I.O. requests it monitors, thereby implementing adaptive page replacement and complex buffer management strategies. It is this kind of underlying efficiency algorithm that is responsible for doing complex memory system management, which means it has a page table, and maintains some virtual memory system through page tables and complex segmentations. It takes care of MMU for address translation, page faults via interrupt handling, and memory protection via paging and segmentation. There are disk scheduling algorithms such as scan, c-scan, look, that minimize the head movement and seek times for the disk, and an extensive journaling system to maintain partial file system consistency, which does not harm performance much. The advanced resource management applies multiple levels of tuning, memory compression, zero copy networking, DMA for IO operations, and process scheduling that dynamically with the transmission and operations, as well as priority inheritance protocols to minimize or eliminate priority inversion. The OS's real-time scheduling functionalities guarantee a certain response time for critical tasks without sacrificing overall system responsiveness. These technical implementations combine to convert hardware capabilities into computing efficiency with the ability to respond to users. But what happens when things go wrong? How does the OS keep everything healthy? Mistakes occur, and that's just part of computing. The OS uses Advanced Error Detection and Correction, or EDAC, techniques to ensure system integrity. The OS uses multi-layered fault tolerance ranging from ECC memory handling to CRC to checkpointing, or logging the state of processes, and journaling file systems to ensure data consistency. The OS leverages Advanced Diagnostic Frameworks, or Kernel Panic Handlers, Watchdog Timers, and System Trace Facilities 
facilities to monitor its critical operations. Signal handling in the OS takes over when process exceptions are thrown, segmentation fault handling, buffer overflow protection, etc. Memory protection is enforced at the granularity of pages and segments by the Memory Management Unit, or MMU, and privilege level checking and bounds verification are used to validate system calls. The OS can keep the system stable during component failures through refined exception handling vectors and interrupt service routines, or ISRs. The OS practiced system diagnostics at a fine-grained level with facilities like kernel event logging, performance counters, and memory leak detection. Virtual memory spaces and protected mode execution provide process isolation to prevent cascading failures, while resource usage monitoring implements resource usage thresholds to raise alerts using kernel-level monitoring subsystems. With these rock-solid error handling systems in place, the OS guarantees system reliability without sacrificing performance using graceful degradation protocols. But I think the best way to show you why an OS is necessary is to imagine what using a computer computer would be like without one. What would a computer be like without an operating system? Not much more than a high-tech paperweight. Powering on a computer without an OS would be a letdown. You'd likely boot directly into the BIOS or the basic input-output system, or see a message like operating system not found on a black screen. The BIOS might recognize the hardware, but it can't do much beyond running a few low-level checks. It's like starting a car only to find no engine under the hood, nothing to power the ride. Sure, the hardware components, CPU, memory, storage, are all there, but without an OS to organize them, they're just a bunch of disconnected parts. No OS means no applications, file management, or user-friendly interface. Your computer becomes a collection of electronic parts, about as useful for productivity as a digital brick. Technically, you could run certain programs directly on the hardware in bare metal programming. This is common in devices like microwaves or Arduino boards where simple commands run directly on the CPU without an OS. But without an OS, you're left with only the most basic capabilities. Think calculations like 2 plus 2. Running sophisticated software or multitasking? Forget about it. The BIOS would act as a skeleton crew, able to verify hardware connections and help with system configurations, but it lacks the functionality needed for real computing. It's like having a flashlight instead of electricity for a whole house. Just enough to prove it works, but not nearly enough to be useful. In short, a modern computer without an OS is a worse microwave. And why is it that way? Because of everything we discussed in the video. So who cares? The main thing to take away is that your computer isn't all the hardware you see. It's the OS. Because without the OS, all these parts wouldn't be able to do anything. So next time you update an OS, if it takes a little longer than usual, don't worry. You're not just updating Windows. You're updating your entire machine.